Hi, everybody. It's Russ with my Hammers 11. Hope you're safe and well. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you may know every time we put new content. And as always, we'd like to thank our channel sponsor, Suntuck It. Check them out in the description below. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Jeff. Happy New Year. Um, yeah. <laughs> Happy New Year. We've got, um, we've got Jeff Longer, Sir Jeff, as he calls himself on Twitter. Um, I won't say we've got Sir Jeff on because people might think, the other Sir Jeff. Um, yeah, <laughs> not that proper one. How are you, Jeff? How are you, man? I'm great, thank you. Um, it's been very difficult last year, obviously, but uh, got through that okay. And looking forward to um, some uh, pleasant results coming our way and for the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean, not that last year hasn't been too bad for the, year, the men's right. team, was it? So it's uh, we're doing all right at the moment. I'll, I'll take 10th at the beginning of the season yeah. if you oh. to me. Certainly, especially the way the fixtures sort of panned out as well. Yeah. Um, everyone was saying, well, after about 10 games, we'd probably have about two points or something. But we've done yeah. okay. Well, yeah, but there's, 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 there's a nice nice atmosphere, it seems, amongst the team. You know, it seemed to all, you know, you know, it seems to be a good team spirit. Particularly. Yeah, I, I, I like the spirit at the moment. Um, mm. And that's... If they can keep that going and don't get any of the old ones back that were perhaps the troublemakers, which is being bandied around at the moment. <laughs> I could hope not. It, no, it seems to be a really good team spirit. And um, I think that's quite a lot to do with the results, really. You know, it's, yeah. it, it helps. It, yeah. it on the field, off the pitch, it's all the same. Yeah, it's sort of, and it's sort of, it's like a domino, a domino, a snowball. That's a snowball effect, isn't snowball, it? When, yeah, when, yeah, yeah, not domino. That's 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 a reverse. <laughs> that's that was a domino effect. A that was two effect. years ago. <laughs> yeah, that's a few years ago. But it, it it's so true, isn't it? When when the team are playing well, if you've got that, if you've got initial sort of team spirit, and the team are playing well, and they continue to play well, the spirit gets yeah. better and better and better. Um, no, I totally agree. I mean, you saw like obviously like over Christmas period, of you know. Obviously, the Everton game was fantastic, but that oh, Brighton yeah. game particularly, you know, the, the West Ham of old would have lost that 2-3-0. Oh, no easy. Problem. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, I, I was quite impressed because I thought, yeah, he picked the wrong team for that game. Yeah. But we still got a point and you have to say, well, look, every point is important. You know, yeah. it's if you come back, you, you know, it's, it all helps. It does help, and 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 still, the, there's the West Ham in all of us, that West Ham nurse yeah. in all of us, because we say, yeah, we've got 26 points, yet 14 points to go. That's not, yeah, that's <laughs> you know, what I mean, we're always, we're yeah. always like 14 points to go. Not the fact that we're 10th and, and we're doing no. all right, and yeah, we're looking up for Europe. No, no, 14 points to go. So. Yeah. Um, and when you look at that table, I mean, there's so many clubs on 26 points at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I know. you know, it's just that's where you don't want to slip out of that. You just want to, another win, so it keeps you up there and. Yeah. Keep us in touch. And, uh, well, I mean, you look at poor old Spurs. Poor old Spurs. You know, they were top of the league. Yeah, and now yeah. they're like, you know, stumbled. They're like eighth, seventh, eighth. You know, it's it's incredible how quickly they've all changed, particularly over, obviously, the Christmas period. And, you know, we had all those games. And now we've got nothing <laughs> until yeah. mid, until uh, Stockport. Which we look forward to that. Oh, one. yes. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Wonder why that's on the box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I have this vision of Ian Dowie just sitting back, <laughs> relaxing, <laughs> watching the FA Cup draw. Stop for ah oh, against West Ham. What? <laughs> you know, it's like oh, it just got yeah. over that. Bless him. I'm sure I scored at that ground. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I score a header? I have to Google it. Yeah, but he'll get the old royalties on the old, the old clips. They'll be all right. I'm sure they'll be playing that many, many times. <laughs> I'm sure. Lead up before that, but it's uh, it's crazy, isn't it? With all that game, we're always like you know, it's three games in six or seven days, and now, now nothing. You know, now Thomas Suchek can go and eat potato salad, wherever yeah, it is. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be happy. So, uh, what a player he is as well. Oh. And, he's, and that's what I mean. He's like, it seems to be the right, they're bringing in the right types of players, you know, just yes. hungry. Um, you obviously, Sue, you know, Sue Check, Sue Fowl, yeah. Bowie, you know, they just all seem to, I mean, they, to be fair, even Mr. Dawson, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I was a bit sort of fed up with the sort of people on Twitter having a go at some of the players and Dawson in particular. Yeah. I mean, all right, he's, we're looking for somebody perhaps a bit younger and bit more flamboyant as you sat at the back but you know you've got he's a bit of a genius to me mm. you know you Great need shot. some you need somebody like that you know you, you you can't just have footballers across the back four and you, you do need somebody yeah. that's just a stopper 
Well, I mean, even Balbuena, he's a stopper, isn't he? You wouldn't yes, call him a yeah. cultured you no, know, he's player. He's certainly not a passer of the ball, is he? <laughs> no, 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 no. And that's why they're, you know, those two, to be honest, are quite interchangeable, I think. You know, they're sort of yeah, that sort of right. old school, you said like ginge type yeah. um, centre backs. But as long as, as long as Craig Dawson's got his sugar levels up, we're all right. You know, that's. <laughs> I wasn't sure what had happened. I, 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 <laughs> that's that's what, that's what the official line was that he, he had a he was low he, he collapsed because of sugar levels or something like that. Oh, right. So, so many games he'd played, I suppose. <laughs> it's, it's the adverse effect, isn't it? You get one where they're so tired because they play so. It's like when you're on hot. It's like when um, you know, when you have like some time off for Christmas or whatever, and you're more tired doing nothing. Yeah, that's right. There. Yeah, it's like it, it, it must be the same for him. Bless him. I thought yeah. he landed awkwardly first of all and yes. done something to his ankle or something. But when you see it slow motion, I thought, no, he's done nothing there. Yeah. Oh, dear. Just, <laughs> just, but it adds to the fact, it's just, it is a West Ham, typical West Ham yeah. thing, isn't it? It just adds to the fabric. Yeah, it is, yeah. And that's yeah. that's what it is. But um for those who don't know, see Jeff, um Jeff's Jeff's daughter's quite 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 famous amongst the West Ham fraternity. <laughs> We've had Kate on. She's done an eleven. Bless her. Quite. She was one of the early ones. God bless her. Um, but uh, how was how was Christmas in the in the Longhurst family? Was what happened for you guys over Christmas? Just me and my wife because yeah. uh, at the sort of tier four. Yeah. Uh, so Kate had to spend it. She was actually she proved positive, at, uh, along with ten other players at West Ham. Yeah. Women. Uh, so it wasn't too good, but she was okay in herself. But sure. uh, and then my other daughter, she had to stay in her flat over in Crouch End. So it wasn't the same. It was it was a yeah. shame not to see the family, but it's just something you have to put up with, you know. It is, isn't it? It's not yeah. like every year, is it? You know, mm. just get on with it. It is. It is a case of just getting on with it, isn't it? Unfortunately, and um, yeah, Easter is my my time. I've, I think I think by Easter. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking by Easter. I just, oh, I just want to, sorry, I just want to book a holiday. <laughs> yeah, well, all the travel companies are all like doing it over Christmas, weren't it? Like, yeah. like Ryanair. Did you see Ryanair's one? It was Jab and Go. That's, That's his, uh, right. Nigel O'Reilly. He's yeah. fun, Michael Riley's funny, isn't he? You know, yeah. But, um, yeah, but they, they were trying it because a lot of people are just booking stuff. And, you know, nowadays it's like now it's used to cancelling holidays now. It's like, oh, yeah. it's like yeah. about three or four last year. Um, but yeah, he's booking. It'd be nice to, nice to get away. It'd be nice to get away eventually. Particularly when you look outside, and it's actually pissing it down in all. Oh, I know. And yet, we were lucky during the summer, though. I think we because, were. Yeah. You know, if, if it had been bad then, I think it'd have been oh. twice as bad for the old mental health and everything for everybody. Very true. Uh, we like hardened by the time the, we- the weather got bad and the, and yes, the nights yeah. drew in. We we had a few months of lockdown already, wasn't it? It's a bit like being yeah. a West Ham fan, Jeff. Really, is it? You're hard. Yeah, so you're used to the disappointments. Yeah, the roller coaster of life. <laughs> exactly. That's what being a West Ham fan is character building, isn't oh, it? I think. So. Well, that's one one phrase. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say the other one, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Jeff, so why are you a West Ham fan? What, what's your story? Well, my dad was a late Orient supporter. Yeah, uh, and it goes back to the sort of early sixties, and we, I used to go over late Orient with him. Yeah, and I think he was an Orient supporter because he served in the war with Alex Stott, who was the manager of Orient, and um, so there was a sort of he got a season ticket, and I used to go over and watch the games. And then one of my neighbours, I think it's about 1965, I think, said, do you want to come over West Ham, see a game? And I went and, oh, the difference, you know. Yeah. I was just taken with it. I, I was just awestruck. It was brilliant. And, the, of- the, the, yeah, Bobby Moore, to oh, me, yeah. you know, he's still the best player I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it was brilliant. And I just couldn't support anyone else after that. That was yeah. it. I was going over there. Uh, it, it, they'd hooked me with one game. Really yeah. Had. Well, particularly those games over at Brisbane Road as well. <laughs> well, having said that, they actually went up one year. They went up with Liverpool. And when you look at the change in fortune of the two wow. clubs now, that, that's a 61 62 season. And that's Liverpool cool. don't do slightly better things than Orient since. <laughs> and Orient went down the next season. <laughs> well, well, I had their moment know. of glory. I used to remember that because the Orient, I used to go there because it was one game when I lived in Loughton, so it was like easy to get to Orient when you was a kid. And so it'd be like one game, and they'd always play opposite West Ham yeah. home and away, wouldn't it? And so they were doing like 
tenner like season ticket for six under 16 so you do West oh, yeah. on weekend and then the o's i, I remember see some great games they beat Darwin yeah. eight nil i remember that that was a great game <laughs> and there's me like it was pissing out of ice gonna be nil nil to be so boring this game when it was eight eight nil i was like oh my god but yeah i remember seeing them going i remember peter chilton's thousand oh, yeah, like that yeah, it was there, and, and they'd been to Wembley a few times in the playoffs as well. But uh, yeah, but then when West Ham came along, that was it. You saw one game. Yeah. It. Although when or at that one season, they did beat West Ham, obviously at Brisbane Road. Naturally, <laughs> but they all, in three uh, successive home games, I think they beat West Ham, Everton, and Man United. So wow. then after that, they just went downhill. After that, but, uh, oh, it peaked too soon. Yeah, yeah, but no, but once yeah. I saw West Ham play, that was it. It was the football they used to play was ridiculous. I mean, I used to go over and see a five-two. The next week they'd lose away sort seven-one. Then they beat Fulham home six-one, and it was just rained goals. It was just yeah. a great time, really great. And and also, I mean, you, you, I mean, to be fair, Jeff, you probably, you got into at the right time, wasn't it? Just for that golden yeah. period, and it was like to see all them, see all the boys yeah. play, so to speak. Um, yeah, there must have then obviously 66 and everything else. It's just like you, you literally yeah. got just as they were. Yeah, just it's right at the top, sort of. But yeah. Uh, since then, not a lot, but <laughs> yes, plenty more thin than thick then. But uh, yeah, but like, yeah. the football they actually played. I mean, it was if you look at it now, you'd probably think, well, it's, it's not that great technically, anything like that. But it was yeah. very exciting at the time. Yeah, football has changed totally. Yeah. levels of fitness although the pitches they played on in those days and you know sort of mud baths weren't they really yeah and i don't know how they did it but well that was the one thing that i that, that i was not naive but i never really thought about and until i started doing this channel because obviously we've interviewed lots of ex-players as well and you know even like moving to like the eight we have like maca and tc and stuff and you know i mean maca was talking about dev and we've had a dev on as well actually and he goes uh you, you go and watch when we beat chelsea four nil and you look at the state oh, yeah. yeah. and i was like oh my god yeah because i was like yeah. i'm you know i started i was you know i was it was it 92 the season we went up uh that was when i started going and so yeah it wasn't like it wasn't, it wasn't great, but it wasn't like the bowling greens they are now at London Stadium and stuff. But uh, if you used to see Derby's ground, yeah, you know, the baseball ground, and Chelsea, as you say, Stamford Bridge, awful. I mean, it just it wasn't a blade of grass. Yeah, it, it was. It was a sound. Yeah. yeah, absolutely crazy. And and those guys were doing doing those stuff, and you know, and scoring those goals, and and, yeah. and playing you know beautiful football on. You know, could you imagine like them lot? You know, like when they have like the the, the sort of the virtual reality things. If you could get like you know a Brooking on on oh. like you know, a, a prime Brooking and Dev yeah. on London Stadium pitch, that would have been. Oh, uh, and vice versa, could, could Messi do it at Stamford Bridge in the eighties? That's the question. You know, that's. that's the question. <laughs> I'd like to see it. <laughs> I'd like to have a go. See what happens. Then we'd see who the best player in the world is. But um, that's what I mean. Obviously, and you've you know, so obviously when you started supporting them, then they started winning stuff as well, um, which is also quite good. Um, yeah. Like you know, sixty-seven and stuff like that, and seventy-five, and the FA Cups, and so you had that sort of that yeah. glory period of, of yeah. being a modern West Ham fan. I, I do miss the old FA Cup final every sort of 15 years or so now. Or <laughs> well, we had one in 2006. We, we, we're due yeah. one, aren't well, we? That's, that's that's true, actually, yeah. There we go. But I mean, winning them. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. Never, I don't know that is. Sorry, Jeff. I never seen it, it, sorry, in the Cup. We won the Cup. Sorry. sorry. It, it's strange because even from sort of in the first year of supporting West Ham, I always knew that I would never see West Ham win the top league. <laughs> It was just, you know, whatever league they were in, I just thought they're never going to win the, like, now the Premier League. But, I mean, I just knew it had never happened, and I've been resigned to that fact since yeah. then, right from the beginning, <laughs> which has probably helped me looking that way rather than being optimistic and thinking well, one day we'll do it because <laughs> I've also got thing. a brave that sad old man. <laughs> Someone asked me the other day, like, would you like to be like Man City or Liverpool and win the leagues? I don't, and part of me is like, you know what? I, I, the idea of it I like, but I don't think. Yeah, yeah but it'd be nice to win something. But then I think, you know, in terms of winning the league or, you know, winning every week, and that would lose, like, 
oh West Ham then. Do you know what I mean? It's like we like that. You know, we're always a half yeah. glass end type bunch of fans. So it's like the Arsenal lot now. You know, all, I mean, oh, like, yeah. like 11, but it was brilliant when they were like 15th and they yeah. were like, you know, on the implosion. And I was like, 15th? We have taken 15th. Yeah. <laughs> Glory 15th. days. Yeah. Let's look, come down to our world for a minute and see how it feels for once. But uh, I think I could live with being a Leicester. You know, just yeah. doing the one-off, that'd be nice. But yeah. I just know it'll never happen. So, But then it's like, I was talking to someone today and, and they were saying, you know, our sort of league is probably, you know, if we, you know, a good season or an average season will be like top 10, maybe top eight. And then occasionally, as you said, there could be a, like, you know, a Leicester season or even a season like now, to be honest, where it's like so tight, a couple of wins yeah. and you're, yeah, right up. you're up to fifth, aren't you? And exactly. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then obviously we'd probably qualify for the you know, pre-qualification for Champions League, get knocked out by... Yeah, or, really you know, <laughs> yeah they get relegated the following season and then everyone go, oh, well, we get Big Sam back in and it will have, you know, it's it's, a, it's, a, it's just a cycle of being a West Ham fan. You know, oh, we've had a few it, it seasons. certainly is. I mean, it's not that long ago. I was just over at the London Stadium, going out the ground after another defeat and going, this club needs changing from top to bottom. You know, it's it's not yeah. just the 11 on the pitch today. It starts right at the top, goes all the way through. Now we're all, at the moment, happy again with yeah, the I think it's, it. Yeah, I, th- I think it's it's one of those things where I think with with the playing staff and and, and, and Moisey's brought together this sort of background, this backroom staff, which seem to be... You know, it's it's a t- it does seem to be a team effort. Where, where yeah. previously, we under like Pellegrini and not so much Slav because obviously you knew Julian was there, but that was probably about it. You didn't really know the backroom staff. You know, you didn't know yeah. who the assistant manager was. You know, you know, you know Kevin Nolan. You know, you know Stuart yeah. Pierce, Alan Irvine, <laughs> even the, the the new lad, the one who got booked against John Terry, Steve Billows. You know, yeah. you know these guys now, and it's like, and and they all seem to be proper football blokes. Do you know, fo- yeah. proper football men. Um, I think Nolan was a very wise move. Yeah, it was. You know, I think, I think he's got a lot of knowledge in there, and it was a, a great player as well. Well, I, I think um, there's no there's no denying the fact that you know. I mean, I was looking at Robert Banks puts up his season reviews before they get taken down on YouTube and he puts them back up again. And I was watching the ones um, of Nolan playing for us and the role that Nolan played on corners particularly is the role that Antonio used to, is, is playing when he's fit on corners. That's all standing in front of the goalkeeper, treading his toes. Oh, yeah. You know, and and it, it, we, we do seem to be a bit more about, you know, not so much of a pushover yeah. now. Um, yeah, that's right. Which is great to see. It's really but nice it, to see. And I think also Nolan's more in touch with a modern day player than yeah. when we've had the older sort of coaching staff and that as well, which helps. So you can see both sides of it. Well, good point. I mean, you know, he's, he, he played with our captain. You know, well, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> everyone, everyone played with our captain. You know, to be yeah, honest. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but it is, it's, yeah, it's a good point. I think he's, he's a really, uh, it just seems to be a bit about him. I mean, I mean, when you're when you're watching the games at home, Jeff, at the moment, do you watch them with the crowd not the fake noise on or the fake noise off? I've done both, and I think yeah. I prefer it without the yeah. noise because you can hear it out. Yeah, 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 and especially if they're playing somewhat Tottenham, and all you can hear is oh, <laughs> I can't stand that. So I just turn over the channel and then just put it. With, you can hear the actual proper. Language yeah. coming out then as well. I know, yeah. That's that. I, and, and that's what I mean. If you listen to that, you hear, hear how much our bench shouts. Yes. They all shout, yeah. and that that makes quite an intimidating atmosphere when there's no fans there. And I think, you know, I wouldn't want to be a player going into half time not have put a shift in. To, no, that's to right. Stuart Pierce, Kevin Nolan, <laughs> Alan Irvine, Moisey, feeling they're all like proper, like you know, they have a go. Yeah, they, proper. They, they're demanding. And, yeah. and that's what West Ham have lacked in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Been a soft touch and, you know, they've just got no oomph about them. You know, they just, yeah. if they're not going to turn up, they'll just, uh, you just see the heads go down, go 2 0 down, and that's it. Yeah. But this totally. season, when we've gone behind, we've started sort of recovering. We always, look like we, we always look like we've got a goal in us. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yes. again, there was a period, God, I remember periods sort of. I can't remember it must have been late 90s when we had uh you know Mike 
Yeah, Mike Newell and Brian Dean up front. I think we lost 3 0 to Leeds one day. And I think we never shot on target. It was so depressing. Um, yeah. but now it looks like whether it's a corner or a throw on or a free kick or, you know, Suchek running in the last minute to get, you know, we always oh. seem to have a goal now. Do you know what I mean? It's just, it's, yeah. it's exciting. And when, whenever have you known that West Ham, you know, can score goals from corners and yeah. free kicks? I mean, well, you know, it's just dead ball situations. Every team's scared of us now. It's, yeah. it's great. Well, particularly when like that, that when we played Leeds, that Leeds game, yeah. um, Leeds away. I mean, they they were absolutely shocking at the, in a defending corners, and it's like you know, clearly he's like that's a major thing of the of the Brit- English game. Really, is, yeah. is, is, is is those sort of dead ball situations, and we just seem to have a lot more about us in those in those situations. We've got a lot of height, we've got a lot of aggression, and we get some good delivery in there. You know, I mean, Cresswell, where's his left this left foot come from? Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like. I remember well, he's known he can cross the ball, but it, you know, it just wasn't doing it for a long time. No. And he's uh, had that freedom now to do it. It's I, I, I've coined a phrase called called it's a verb actually to moisify. It's when you take a player <laughs> and you change him, like he's like I did it with Arnie, didn't oh, I? Yeah. I did it with Arnie, yeah. really. Arnie was floundering in the right wing, put him up front, it became like you know. You know, got him his move to China and he's yeah. not coming back. Um, <laughs> and and uh, exactly, he's done it with Antonio and he's done it with Matawaku and Cresswell yeah. and you know, any four now, you know, these players he's completely changed into different players and to fit his system. And I just think, yeah, I'm just you know, when and I've said it before, there's you know, when people when players move to certain clubs, they, they go, Oh, you know, I was encouraged by the projects the manager told me. Yeah. And, project and it's all bullshit but actually you, yeah it's just 150 grand but you know it's the, it's the project <laughs> oh, yeah, <there's> that <laughs> exactly but i mean with noisy there seems to be a project do you know what i mean it seems yeah. to be he's, he's got a vision of what he wants to do and you know he says he wants to sort of build an everton and a new everton type thing in terms of what he did his legacy at everton and i'm all for that all for that i think that's what we need yeah I must admit, when we got Moyes, I, he w- wouldn't have been my choice. But then no. again, I'm not sure who would have been my choice. Yeah. Um, who would come to West Ham at that time? Uh, but I like what he's doing at the moment. Yeah. Um, it was a, the Brighton game is a bit frustrating because the team he selected, I thought. Um, so there are times when you think, oh, we're talking about the old dinosaur effect again. But yeah, 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 yeah. To, be, to be fair, overall, so far this season, there's certainly no complaints here. No, and he put his hands up, didn't he, after the game? He said, I've, "I got the team selection wrong that day." Yeah. And um, but he was, you know, he wasn't, you know, he's done it a few times. I think it was the Villa game when he he took he bought two and a half time and swapped it round when it wasn't really working. Yeah. Um, he does seem to now be mo- being able to move. And what I like about our team is we set up one way, and then by literally one substitution we can change the whole dynamic of the team yes. now. before it used to be oh i don't know i don't know you took off one person it was basically a light for light it was light for light definitely yeah, yeah. but and but now as you say you know antonio coming on now yeah this it, you could just see the whole movement of the team was different not just him yeah the whole team seemed to liven up because he was running into the areas which we could use, you know, and that was releasing other players. And mm. it's great. It is really encouraging. It is really encouraging. Um, and then obviously, you know, it'd be, it'd be stupid of me not to talk about Kate while you're here. Um, you know, as a as a West Ham fan, when Kate said she was signing for West Ham, how did that make you feel? Uh, it's all right. You know. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was ecstatic. <laughs> yeah, I um, yeah it, I mean, it's it's my team, it's her team. Yeah. Um, and I never even thought about it before because I didn't think they'd ever be in the top league yeah. uh, term professional. So nothing I'd actually thought, oh, perhaps one day it'll happen. Yeah. Uh, I was quite happy when she was playing with Chelsea or Liverpool of because they were you know, the top teams in yeah. playing in the top league. Yeah, uh, yeah, but once West Ham did join that league, I thought, well, never know. Um, yeah, got a contract there. I was uh, very, very happy. And oh, just you know, the walking out of Wembley for the cup final yeah. was brilliant. That was such a lovely day. So, sort of, even just before the match, just going down pitch side talking and that. And 
and also at Reading at the Majeski Stadium where she catched in the team when Jilly was out. Yeah. That was quite nice. That was nice feeling seeing her walk out, you know, leading the team. Sure. And that's completely different to men's football and everything, but it's still when it's your family. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's a family, but also, it's, as you said, it's a connection between you and the club, Kate and the yeah. club, and, and both of you and the club together, you know. And it's, yeah, that's right. It's just, obviously, we've, we've had Kate on before, and she said sort of pretty much the same thing. She's a West Ham fan, she's playing for the club she loves. And same as, you know, to have your daughter, you know, she was obviously a professional already. She'd won league, she's on WSL, you know, yeah. Liverpool and stuff. And then to to play for your your club, the two of your club, um, it must be like, and as a dad, it must be like the, the proudest moment. Isn't oh, it? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Getting capped in, it's like, oh. it's the pinnacle of, of what she can, as a West as a West Ham fan, in terms yeah. of what she can achieve. It was a shame they couldn't win the game at Wembley, but um, yeah. the actual day and everything was absolutely superb. Uh, uh, yeah, very proud. And it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a West Ham modern team if we didn't win the cup, if we did, because because obviously we won easy for four years, so yeah, right that's true. Right. Yeah, men's women doesn't matter, you know. We, we'd won, but yeah. that's going to change this year. That's going to change this year. We're going to win something this year, FA Cup well, this year. There we go. That'd, so, be nice. that'd be nice. No fans in the stadium. That that that's what I mean. That's, <laughs> oh, that's done. Best, best oh, that'd be so frustrating, wouldn't it? You know, it will happen just because it's yeah. just. I thought we was going to have a run next last season. To be honest, when it was all starting to kick off, in terms of the yeah. COVID, be like typical, we got like cancelled and we'd have got to the final, or whatever. But yeah, it's um, I've got a feeling. I can't this. imagine that. I really, I think I'd have to turn up. <laughs> That's the trouble, isn't it? Yeah, we'd have to be something, some yeah, subtly uh, have some friend, had some a family in a social bubble just down Wembley Way yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> We're in our same bubble. We're in a tent outside Wembley yeah. Way. <laughs> in our bubble. You're on up. We're okay. But yeah, no, it's funny. But we'll see. I, I've just I've got a feeling this year. I just think, you know, Stockport. And also the, the fact is, and, and why it, it I think it plays into the hands of the Premier League teams particularly, is you know, the I think it's the FA have said you've got to play the game, whatever. Um, if you haven't got enough players, then you have to forfeit the game, like they did with um the Orient game against Spurs, weren't oh, they? Yeah, yeah. Um that could easily happen by you're going to get, I think you're going to get some clubs having some buys and things like that. And the Premier League clubs, I think will will do quite well in the leagues in the, in the FA Cup this year, just because of the way it's well, all set, unfortunately. We can wait and see what Boris says tonight first, because exactly. <laughs> that might not be a cup again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, that'd be so typical West Ham though, isn't it? Because oh, you know, as soon as we get a run, run of form, it's either an yeah. international break or a, a, a COVID break or a circuit break or whatever they're going to call it. And uh, and yeah, we'll come back. It'll be bloody awful for about two weeks, and then be all right. I think it's Sam awesome. will be happy, don't I? Oh yeah, big Sam. Oh, big Sam. Try and get his West Brom team together. Well, they'll probably resign before then, before they go <laughs> down. It depends what his payoff is. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Aladinci, bless him. Right. Anyway, let's talk about your your Hammers eleven, uh, Jeff. Okay. So, as I said, everyone we have on the channel. Um, whether it's fans, ex-players, whatever, do their 11. So it's 11 players. You can pick whoever you want, whatever criteria, your favourite, your, your worst, whatever. But the only rule is you have to be alive to have seen them yeah. play. Now, as we said just before we started recording, as an experienced fan, Jeff, you probably have one of the toughest jobs because you've got quite a <laughs> spectrum of, of, of yeah. fantastic players you've seen over the years. So it'll be very interesting to see. And you can play whatever formation yeah. you want as well. It doesn't matter either. Um so um, we'll start off between the sticks. We'll start off between the sticks. Who's going to be in goal for uh, the Jeff 11? This was quite easy because um, there was only one other goalkeeper that pushed him close, and that would have been McCloscoe. But yeah. Phil Parks, all day. He yeah. was the best goalkeeper we've ever had. Um, he was different class. He was fantastic signing. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't. But that was one of the easiest positions to pick. So that was quite nice. Uh, you know, when he started like that, I thought, well, this is easy. Yeah, Parks, <laughs> the right back yeah, as well. But... <laughs> yeah. Ludo, obviously, you had Roberto. You had to miss some good goal. Well, <laughs> oh, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> well, God, lucky we got rid of him. Otherwise, he'd be playing. That's <laughs> Sunday, would he? For the Everton game. God bless him. Paul. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, yeah, Parks is just... Um, yeah. Some of the stories about him as well, you know, before a game, having a tipless scotch before he goes out on the pitch and you think, well, 
that's West Ham, isn't it? Yeah. But it's always that's to that era, you know. You, there's a yeah. certain generation. Obviously, you hear stories when we interview people who are around during those times and things like that. And 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 you say like modern football's changed, and 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 it has, and and stuff like that. You know, they seem footballers seem more like well, they're you know they're no disrespect to anyone like you know, but they're 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 athletes now, aren't they? They're sort of. You know, they they they, they you well, yeah. having a tipple of scotch before a game, yeah. wouldn't they? They'd well, yeah. in or whatever, or a glucose uh, packet or something like that. But uh, no, parks. Yeah. A lot of that is the influence of the foreign players that've been over here for years as well, and they were they, they never used to. But, oh, I believe that, but yeah, uh, they, they, smoke, just, they used to smoke though, didn't they? All the foreigners used to smoke when they came over here, and I remember Slav. Slav had to stop smoking. Oh didn't yes, he? that's right. Yeah. Um, although I actually remember we played. Oh, who was it? It was we, we played it might have been Burkakara, FC Burkakara in, in the Europa League qualifier um at Upton Park. And the little manager, they had a manager, little probably about four foot nothing he was. Um and he at half time pre-match and after the match, he was having a fag out the front where everyone else had to he was like, Should we be doing like a team talk or anything? But nah, you know, he's like uh, I'm still investing. But um right, okay, we'll put park to him. Who's next? You go for the team as you want to, Jeff. Okay. Well, I'm going to do a four-four-two. Nice. Um, and it's a very attacking four-four-two as well. So West Ham way. Um, <laughs> at right back Ray Stewart. Um, what a signing he was. Um, he, some of his it wasn't just a penalty taker. His defending was really good. Yeah. His crossing was good if you could get on the end of it because the speed of the ball. Yeah. Um, but it, it was just brilliant to watch. Uh, I, I remember one game, he played Tottenham, and he scored. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but the cameras couldn't even keep up with it because they didn't realise, one, he was going to shoot from the edge of the 18-yard box on the right, and the speed of the ball went in. The cameras didn't even catch it properly. Fantastic. It's fantastic character as well, a leader, another leader on the pitch, mm-hmm. which you know, we've lacked over the years. Yep. Uh, yeah. But in those days, they probably had about five or six leaders on the pitch. So, oh, got so. you, yeah, got you. And, and to be picked up at you know, such a young age as well. Uh, yes, you know, I think people forget about that how young he was and to come down from Scotland as well. You know, a lot, lot of and, and you know, and he's one of these sort of adopted cockneys now, isn't he? He's like, yeah, you know, certainly, yeah. We drag him out of the pitch, bless him at London Stadium, <laughs> and we could all go back to the pit. And and but he'll. But what I love about Ray is he just. He's. I mean, we 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 get him. He'll be on the channel soon, but we're gonna. He wants to do it face to face. He doesn't like doing all this. In- oh, okay. You know, Ray likes. To, you know, he's always impeccably turned out. Ray, isn't he? And um, and he sort of phoned me to say, look, I'm not. I'm not sort of ignoring you, Russ. This is why I don't want to do it. But then we, we ended up talking about West Ham for. We had like a two hour phone conversation. Yeah. And I, I haven't met him properly before, but he still took the time. And you know, it's just class. He's a classy man. Yeah, yeah. Sure that's right. And, uh, and also, I think in those days, we obviously had a good scouting system in uh, Scotland. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, we picked up a few players, some of them not so hot, but um, but we were always <laughs> on the lookout for players then and picking them up reasonable prices, you know. Yeah, that's true. So, it's true. And I mean, uh, John just had that, John said that like a wave of Scot- Scottish players, isn't he, for a while? He had quite a good yeah. run on them. So, uh, yeah, no, he's very, very good. Um, we always have we always have had like this good connection with Scottish players. I don't know what it is. It's like you know, even afterwards, you know, years afterwards, people like you know Christian Daly and and people like Snoddy and people like that. You know, yeah. they're all just good and they get on well with the fans and yeah, and they they always put a shift in, don't they? they always put a. Well, I was just going to say they're hard workers, aren't they? they? Yeah, they they earn the respect of the crowd. Definitely, definitely. Uh, right, let's put Tonka in. Yeah. Right. Okay. Who's my one of my centre halves would be. Alvin Martin. It can be a very old team, this, by the way. But... <laughs> They're in their prime. They're not playing today. They're not playing it out today, Jeff. Don't worry. I'll do a five-a-side game, I'll tell you. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Alvin, he was a no-nonsense centre-half, which we'd lacked for years, I think, really. Um, scored the odd hat-trick and, well, just the one. <laughs> but he... he was th- telling you about it, though. Isn't that right? He's like... <laughs> He, he's another one though. It's just West Ham through and through, you know, yeah. a scouser, but came down and 
played for us for a number of years, didn't they? And yeah, great very play. Similar, very similar to Ray's story, really, isn't it? You know, yes. And then yeah. a, a late teens and it sort of like became this another another adopted copley. I mean, he stayed down there, you know, where Ray went back, he stayed down here. So um yeah, top, top man, top man Alvis. Yeah, he's and you know, to, to me he did he did a job for West Ham as well. He did he didn't just plug a gap, he actually once he got his position position, he kept it. He you know, no, I'm knock him out of the team. Uh, right. and then alongside him, well it's got to be God. <laughs> Bobby Moore. Oh, sorry, I was gonna put Gary Breen in. Sorry, no, Bobby, oh. yeah. <laughs> Moro, yeah. Um, I, I don't know what I can say really. I, when I can remember when I was about thirteen or fourteen, and I was standing on the North Bank watching the game, and Bobby Moore was just doing his normal, absolutely brilliant performance, and I, I was just thinking, what happens when he retires? What happens to West Ham? I, I was very young. And I just didn't understand. I thought, what happens when he goes? Do we just go down? You know, is that the end of West Ham sort of? Because he was that good. I couldn't see we could survive without him. It was, but that was uh, just me being very young, I suppose. But, but he was that good. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, the things you read about him, you're not just on yeah. the pitch, but off the pitch as well. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's it's... I feel really great to have a hero like that, that I can say I've got a true hero, mm. you know, and, and that's Bobby Moore. And also, you've, you know, you've, you, I thought, you know, you, less and less people actually, sort of, you know, every every day, it's so less and less people yeah. uh, who have seen Bobby play. And so to have that, that those memories, those first-hand memories rather than passed-down memories is, is, is phenomenal. And, I mean, we've had, as I said, we've had, um, we had Matt Lorenzo on. He did, he did a whole documentary, oh, yeah. um, which was really interesting. And he obviously spent a lot of time and uh, with well, for his dad particularly. Um, and we had, like, we had, like, Pikey on. I think Pikey played with Morrow. And, and some of the stories they sort of say, and, you know, just he would... I mean, more. He would literally welcome every player into the players' entrance, so he'd be one of yeah. the first ones there and have you know shake their shake hands. Shake his hands, yeah, yeah. It's like it's Bobby Moore as yeah. a FA Cup, as a World Cup winner, you know, like one of the. Yeah, he doesn't have to do it. No, 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 no. And then he'd go and then you know on the off days we'd go and do his sports shop across the road and yeah, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's just a bizarre, it's a different different world, different time. Yeah. Honestly, a different time. But um, and I, yeah. I appreciate football was completely different then because yeah. I used to think when people used to say before I used to go and watch and say people like Duncan Edwards and that, that other clubs like Man United, how great he was. And, and I used to think, well, were they that great? You know, because I didn't see them. I couldn't yeah. associate with it. You know, or was it because football in those days was easier? Because if you look at some old football clips now, it does look so dated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To me, if, if Bobby Moore was now 20 years old and just coming into this team and showed the same sort of levels of that, you know, it, it'd survive all right, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> some some would say even, even sort of Declan Rice-esque in terms of the modern day, you know, in, in terms of how he handles himself. Um, I, you know, he's, he's he's just – I think Moro's game are probably more suited to the modern game, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, being able to sort of, you don't have to be the quickest player to what you know. It's like you just have to be in the right place at the right time, don't you? And uh, yeah, he certainly was that all the time. Yeah, you know, always just there picking up the pieces and or putting in some brilliant tackles. Remember the seventy World Cup, and you know, yeah, yeah, uh, just a class, uh, man. Oh yeah, classy, man. pure class. And he would be yeah. captain of this team as well, obviously. Of course, so. of course. yeah. <laughs> you said, but you would not do anything to upset yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next, then, Jeff? Well, this would have been a difficult one for Bobby Moore because I would have put Julian Dix next to him. <laughs> I don't know how he would have tamed it. He'd probably have let him go on, actually, and get on with what he wants to do. But uh, it's, um, it, this was tough between him and Frank Lampard Sr. Yeah, cool. because I, was, I saw a lot of Lampard's career and he was a good old tough tackling left back, you know, mm. um, and loyal to West Ham as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, I put Dixie in because I thought, I, know, I, I saw him play some games where he was running the game from left back. Yeah. And it's not yeah. easy to do. No. 
uh, and that's why I just sided with him. Apart from that, I thought if he saw this and he might, <laughs> might give me a phone call or something, you know. <laughs> but he's he's not doing much. He, though, bless him. Apart from looking no, after his kids. No, so, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I put Julian in um, one of the one of the younger ones of my team. <laughs> Uh, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see between him and him and Tonks who are going to do the, the the penalties though, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Be De Canio yeah. Lampard esque from Bradford City yeah. five four in terms of who wrestles the ball. We we'll already get in the middle of them too. You know I mean, at all. Yeah, it wouldn't be just taking the ball out of his hand, would it? It'd be the old <laughs> big part, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Glasgow kids. Um, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, but as you said, I mean, Julie, as you said, from. Uh, he could galvanise a team from a, a not particularly glamorous position at left back and yeah. mental, yeah, and, and not just the team but the crowd. You know, we would if there's a, a lull in the crowd, lull in the game, it's almost like Julian would take him upon himself to do one of his tackles yeah. or <laughs> pin a thirty-five yard, thirty-five ball, yard ball into the top corner or something. You know, yeah. just, like take. Bonnet, terrible gifted player. Terribly. It gifted. was. It's 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 a shame because you know his knees and. Yeah, and yeah, it, it, it could have been a, a golfer, you know. Yeah, uh, I remember we come back from Portugal one year. And, uh, Kate still got her cat being signed by him at the airport, and he, he'd been playing golf over in Portugal. And I was talking to his agent, yeah. and he said, Yeah, he, he said he was, he was on a par four and he got a hole in one, <laughs> he went over the trees, you know. And I, yeah, that that doesn't surprise me. No, no. If you saw some of his goals, he well, goes down the middle of the fairway. No, he goes over the trees and he got a hole in one on a par four. He said <laughs> it was quite amazing. But but Dixie seemed really shy. You know, when he saw we were West Ham supporters, Kate had a cap on and that. Yeah, you know, he, he was probably thinking, "Oh no, here we go, autograph and everything." But he he was good as gold is. I mean, you know. I, I, I think a lot of Mars shy. You know, it's like we've had. Um, we obviously were trying to get some of them on the on the channel, and, and some of them are not used to don't like doing like lots of interviews. Like Julian doesn't really do a lot of interviews, does he? And and people like Steve Potts and people like that and Ludo, they don't do loads of interviews. Um, it's almost like they're sort of they don't realise how much of an effect they had on you know 30, 40, 50, 60,000 people, you know, like yeah. every, every game. Um, it, it, it's such a contrast in the game, isn't there? The, the ones that are just so mouthy. <laughs> and in the news all the time for the wrong reasons. Yeah. And then you get the good guys or the ones that just just sit at home eating okay. potato salad. That's all they do. That's, so. that's, the one. that's my new meal now, that is. That's my new thing, yeah. <laughs> it's like the can I mean the can you had like he had the tiramisu recipe <laughs> in the back of his autograph autobiography. Now it's gonna be the Thomas Sue check yeah. uh, potato salad <laughs> recipe. Must be good because it's three weeks yeah. and he's to eat it for three weeks, so it must be yeah. very good. Um, <laughs> times, times are hard. <laughs> times are tough. It, it, it is the Czech Republic, you know. Bless it is, yeah. The are some of a rarity over there, but uh, right, okay. Uh, Julian left back. Uh, let's let's go into midfield then. Let's go into midfield. Yeah. Um, my second favourite player at West Ham, I suppose, ever. That's Billy Bonds. Yes. What what player? What well, what can you say about him again? You know. He, when he signed, I mean, he was a right back, and I could have easily put him at right back if Stuart hadn't have been there, yeah. because he was a great right back. Yeah. But then to move him into midfield was a fantastic move. Um, I think when we had Bonds, Brooking, Padden, I think that was probably the best midfield in the league. Yeah, because we had like Padden, his left foot, you know, it was just incredible. Um, and those two, the others were just superb footballers. Um, yeah. You know, I'd, I'd love to be out say, say we could go over West Ham and see people putting tackles like Billy Bonds did now in this day and age. Oh, no, no chance now, did VAR. Yeah, VAR be lovely to see that again. Yeah. yeah. It's a shame, isn't it? When you think like that, it's so, you know, it was like. It, Obviously, seeing highlights, it seemed like more of a man's game. Do you know what I mean? Then, and it was, it was, it was a not necessarily sort of technical, but it was more like as you said, like a bonzo tackle and you know, that slit and the and the the, the head. Yeah, oh, I said a bandage yeah. on somewhere. Yeah, all that stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, it's something about it which was just like so, so, so wonderful. But he said nowadays, like, even Julian, he, Julian would play hardly any games um, no. nowadays with VAR and, and, and people like Grealish falling over when they 
chip their toenail and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it's become. At least different Grealish day. would be going down for a, a reason, though. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it really would make sure. Uh, if <laughs> we get up again. Down, yeah, it's not just chip to nail. No, it's like a lot more severe. Bless him. Um, right, okay, we'll put Bonzo in. God bless him. Um, yeah. Who's next, man? Who's next, Jeff? Uh, the next is Sir Trev. Trevor yeah. Brooklyn. Oh. If you look for a couple of seasons, he must have assisted him near enough every goal we scored. <laughs> every time you look on the box, some of the old, you know, through the old footage and that, it seems to be, and Brooklyn you know, passes it through to someone and, and it's in the back of the net. And you think, anyone else actually assisting those days? <laughs> <clears throat> so much skill. Yeah. And again, an, another gentleman as well. Totally. Um, totally. Always got time for. I remember seeing him on a train once and having a conversation with him. You know, it's lovely, lovely chat. Yes, yeah. um, he is. He is. Uh, you, uh, what a player! He are a phenomenal player, and he's not not gifted with with pace, um, yeah. but could just. Just, just like you know, seeing seeing lots of highlights, he would never touch do a first touch, was he? He'd just let the ball glide past him and 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 beat the man by not even touching the ball. It's like you know, it's incredible in terms of the skill he had. And yeah, him and Bonzo in the middle, Bonzo being the minder, and yeah. um, Trev could do be Trev and be Sir Trev, and uh, you know, and not bad. You got three players in, in your team who have all got stands named after him at London Stadium. So <laughs> well, that says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Not quite well, but uh, right. Who's who's next after Sir Trev then, Jeff? Well, this this one is very controversial, and um, this is with apologies to Ground Padden or and Martin Peters, who really, you know, it's a shame I couldn't pick them. But this was for a different reason, and it's Payet. Yeah. Um, obviously not as a person as such, but we don't know really what went on at the club no. and that. But for that one season, one and a half seasons, what I saw from him, I hadn't seen of West Ham, well, ever really. Mm. But he had so much skill. Yeah. Um, it, seeing him beat players, was just how does he do it? Yeah. And it's like West Ham just needed, we needed a character like that again. We needed someone in the team that could bring a smile to your face, basically. Because we, we, it had been such a long time since the days of Rookin and Devonshire and that, you know, it was. So I, that's it's the only reason I've done it because he brought something back. He gave us hope for a, a short while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think also, yeah. like, his, his effect on that last season, that we wouldn't have had that season that we had if it wasn't for him. Um, Absolutely. Not. And. I think probably in in my in my lifetime, he'll probably be the most skillful player I would have ever seen at West Ham. Unfortunately, yeah. I just think he is. You know, he's, we've peaked. I've peaked to thirty. Whatever it was, when was it? Thirty seven, thirty six. I was. Um, but but yeah, he was just phenomenal, wasn't he? Just just yeah. an incredible player. And and what's really interesting, Jeff, is obviously you know you've you've seen like as you said, you've seen Peters, you've seen people like that, and 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 you've you've put Pi in, which means such an effect that he had on your. Oh fan career do you know what i mean at west ham he was just uh, i mean you're never going to get another ballon d'or nominee playing for west ham unless something serious yeah. happens with our club you know what i mean it's just it's just the way it, it's a bit you know and we never and we never buy players it seems or maybe until recently it hasn't been the case with obviously suchek and stuff we never seem to buy players when they're in the right time of their career do you know what no. i mean we, we're a good bookend team we'll get, yeah, kids, no, we'll get that's a very good point and, and, yeah, we'll get the kids yeah. and then we'll get like Teddy's yeah. and We don't tend to get them. That, that, that's all 18 months, two years. Pyatt, that was his prime. Yeah. That was when he was his prime. And we were fortunate enough to see him play. And just like, we don't know how, what went on afterwards. Yeah. It's really matter, really. I think it's it's but, it's irrelevant. It's it's the memories he's, he gave us was phenomenal. Yeah, I, I was just thankful that I saw it because I didn't <laughs> think I was ever going to see a player like that in a West Ham shirt no. again. You know, it was just just didn't see it happening and it was week in week out it was just incredible yeah. the things he could do with the football and don't forget it was, it was he was injured for a few weeks quite a few weeks yeah. as well, wasn't he? and so um and you know what could have been if he didn't got everything that wasn't injured you know and uh, i remember him coming back and he, he was on the bench i think when he was and then and like everyone was just chanting you know we want him on the pitch type thing and then he came on and 
the first thing he did was one of his spinny th- oh, God, one of his spinny things over the ball, and it was like, and he had a good song, and I, and I like playing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you know, a, my my daughter was probably only about God, how old was she? Three, something like that, three or four, something like that, and um, that was and she, so she, you know, but she knew the song, the Pyatt song, yeah. and so that was like. I'd always, that's why I always have a place in my heart because I remember her singing that. Um, you know, bless her because yeah, that's what she could. That's what she, that's a song she could remember. And Lanz, she liked she liked the Lanzini song. We used oh, to yeah. play, but he doesn't. He hasn't until recently. He hasn't played a lot. So um, yeah, that's yeah. somewhere else. But we'll put well, I, I think it brought a, a smile back to all West Ham supporters' yes. faces when he was playing, and you know, times were good again because we had him. You know, it's so true. And it's, it's always so nice to walk out of the ground looking at face of where we've just won a game and a magical performance by a player it's a lot different from getting on the train and we've just yeah. been stuffed at home by some <laughs> rubbish team but made them look like barcelona and yeah it's so true right we'll put in bless him god bless him. Well, i must admit padden did run him very very close because sure. I, I had a lot of time for him what a what a signing he was so, yeah so yeah there you have it okay, but then you. Next. Alongside him would have to be Alan Devonshire. Ah, oh, the Dev. Because he was unreal. I, I remember his debut, and he wasn't actually down on the team list. Because, <laughs> um, he wasn't. I don't think they know. Don't think they had the whole squad on the back page like they do. Oh. You know now. Uh, and they just old oh, playing such and say Alan Devonshire and we'll go no. <laughs> oh yeah, you used to be a full left, full left truck driver or something like this, or a lorry driver and. Cost five thousand pounds. We go. Oh, here we go. Another West Ham signing. You know. <laughs> yeah, five. Yeah, all, of us, all of a sudden, gee. I mean, I've, I've never seen a player show so much of the ball to an opponent and then just go round him. You know, it's okay. Yeah. Come and get it off me if you think you can. And he could start an attack from his own eighteen-yard box and go up to the other eighteen-yard box, and uh, you know, it. Yeah. So much skill. But also he like, you know, unlike, you know, unlike the modern footballer now, for example, um, if they get injured, um, you know, the, you know, Michael Owen's a guy I always, I always look at. So he relied on his pace as soon as his hamstrings went. Yeah. He was never the same player. Um, no, that's right. Whereas obviously Dev was, was, was lightning quick, got injured, had to reinvent himself. He, he reinvented himself as a different player. Um, and then obviously became, you know, the... The 85 86 version of Devonshire, which was which was a, a not not blistering pace, but could just beat players with skill. And yeah. that takes a lot of balls to do that. And 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 just a lot of skill to be able to just you know, because otherwise, you know, he may not have had the career he had if he hadn't reinvented himself after that injury. So um as you said, for, and also for five grand, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, you can't get ridiculous, second, really. second half yes right now. He was very unlucky because he was actually sort of earmarked to uh, be in Robson's England team and be one of the players to build a team around as well. Yeah. Uh, I used to work with somebody that knew uh, Robson at Ipswich. He was a big Ipswich supporter and yeah. not on the board, but just below that level. And he said, you know, he had great plans for him. So I think that was such yeah. a shame. Yeah. <laughs> You can, you can imagine building a team around him um, for an England team. Wow, it's really, yeah. incredible, wouldn't it? Really, um, it's just one of those. But it's 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 again, it's the West Hamness of us, isn't it's, it? It's like the Dean Ashtons, you know, where it's oh, like just go to England and then that's it. You know, it's like you want to. It's like me. I don't even watch any when when England are playing now. I don't watch it at all. I don't yeah. really take much interest. The only thing I look at the after the game is I look at the team sheet. If Declan Rice is on it, yeah, yeah, yeah it it's He's been subbed at 60 minutes. Why is that? No, he's not yeah. injured. It's all bothered. Yeah. yeah. He's, <laughs> so, it's like, on the same. It's, yeah. um, it's not the same these days, unfortunately, when you're watching England. and No. Uh, you particularly look at the team. You look at the team. I mean, Bonzo never played for England. Um, yeah, Dixie never played for England. Um, Dev, yeah. very few games. Obviously, Brooklyn played for me. You know, obviously, Alvin did, but... Even Parks, he didn't get hardly any of his games as he should have got. He, his <laughs> timing was it with Parks? Yeah, I mean, it's he was so it. unfortunate, and it, it's uh, it's like the Andy Murray of tennis, I suppose. Really, you know, <laughs> just those players ahead of him, sort of uh, also world class. And yeah, it just happens, yeah. doesn't it? It seems to happen with West Ham more than anyone else. Yeah. 
you'd have to be you have to be someone like you know, i mean modern day obviously declan rice he, he's all basically he's created this position in the england squad so there he's in it and he's in it you know he's like you he can't be he's, he's the best declan rice playing declan rice position and um but someone like Brooking was the same you know him and keegan didn't get enough games they should have done no, that's uh, true but yeah no it's uh he's all time in west ham and he said parksy two years either side would have probably been england regular Yes, oh, certainly. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he was world class. Yeah, he was. Um, and again, another, another top bloke. Right, who's going to be up front? Then? Who's going to be up well, front? This up front, I've got Frank McAvenny because he was just a favourite of mine. You know, and I've had to leave out players like Hurst, Di Canio, Tevez, <laughs> um, Cotty, Ilian, Mark Ward. I loved as well. Um, and even Bellamy, I liked. He just wasn't there very long, but. At that Bellamy. time, he came and gave us that bit of pace we never had before. Yeah, but he could have been it. Frank McVenny, what a signing. Again, you know, where was it? St. Miriam, was it? Yeah. Our, our Scottish scout again doing the, yeah, doing his the thing. wonders. <laughs> um, his partnership with Cotty, well, everyone knows about that. Uh, you don't expect both of your sort of provide. You have a provider and a scorer oh, normally. Definitely. But between them, they seem to share the goals, didn't they? Really? Yeah. Um, certainly won't have a partnership like that again. But. No, 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 no. As you said, we we could have had it. We could have had it. You know, a, a oh. partner with with Ashton and Bellamy. You know, they oh, would have been. Yeah. They would. They played a couple of games ago. But you're right. Macca yeah. just came in. Is and again when we've had him on the channel, an amazing bloke makes you feel like he's your best mate. Um, always playing goal. And I thought that was a, and I, I that was a pitch take. Footballers playing golf, they all just all oh, they do is play golf. All they oh do, yeah, always do play golf. Um, but he he said he spoke of, of John Law like when he came because he like he flew up to Glasgow and then flew back the same day to sign him and stuff like that, and just the influence of him because I think he was going to sign for Luton. I think he was going to sign for Luton Town. I think Macca said. Oh my God. <laughs> and then yeah, and then the. This, it, then he was he was in he was in the chairman it was signing it's about sign and some like he got a massive slap on the back from someone he goes oh hey, here you go good looking forward for you to playing for us Macca and he went who's that he goes that's the chairman and he goes no, I don't want to from now and then yeah. just, just, just like, like the cut of his chip and um, oh, yeah. like that made a complete career and uh, the career he then had obviously coming back as well yeah and um, that's never easy no no. Um, you know, it, was, it, it was great and great to watch as well. And he was just so flamboyant. He was just, there was something about him. It was, yeah. He was sort of, everyone loved him once he was on, he brought that excitement once he was on the pitch. Yeah. Which, you know, I love about football. It's, we had, got um, oh, you do. Yeah. You, when you've got a player like that who's, who's just flamboyant and just, it, it makes you smile. When you talk about yeah. it, you know, and that that there's, there's plays that you do that you just smile when you think about them. I think it was we interviewed someone and they said they saw Macca's debut. It was for it was might have been against Orient actually in a pre season friendly. We always, always play in pre season, don't we? And yeah. uh, and it and he didn't know who he was, and he was like number he's playing in, cent, in sort of centre midfield when he um and he thought he was Italian because like he had like his blonde hair and he thought he, Machiavelli so he used to call him macaroni and um <laughs> it's Frank Macaroni and he still calls him Frank Macaroni when he sees him. It's so funny. I, I love it. And that's what we get with these funny little stories. Yeah, funny, yeah. funny and it's like it's so true. But um right we'll put Macca in top man. Who's he gonna partner then Jeff? Who's the last um, piece again this this is probably one of my favourite players ever, and that's Pop Robson. Oh, nice. It's the closest thing ever to Jimmy Greaves. Yeah. And you're talking about never getting an England cap. Well, I don't know how he'd never got one because he, he, his goal scoring was just brilliant. It's yeah. just, you just knew he would turn up in the right place. And it was in the back of the net, you know. It was, if you really come, he's not ghosting like Peters or anything like that. He was, up there all the time, but he worked hard as well. We'd come back, work for the ball, set the, the attack off, and then end it up as well. You know, just finish it off. Mm. And I, I remember seeing his debut, and I just thought, "Ooh, we signed here." Yeah, he scored two goals with Notts Forest, Wednesday night, and stand up in the 
North Bank. Um, you know, he, he just scored these two, and I thought, God, we've got someone here. I thought, I've never heard of him before, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he just went on and on. And again, he left, came back again, and continued doing it. Brilliant I mean, player, absolutely you, brilliant. And also, someone like Pop Robson as well. I mean, we've had, we had Crossy on. And Cross, he was like, he was, he, he played with him, but he was like, he, he was his idol, yeah. uh, the original psycho. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, and TC, TC, Pop Robson was one of his idols when he was growing up. So it's not just, it's not just Pop's legacy at West Ham as a player, but mm-hmm. the effect he had on future players coming into play. And with Crossy, 1980s, yeah, obviously, TC is love, TC. Love Crossy as well. Is. Oh, Top man, they're, they're, all, they're all lovely blokes, but they're fantastic players, and they put them in. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, Crossy couldn't be more appreciative of West Ham, the fans, and the fan base. And he's, you know, he, he loves them, and, uh, and obviously, well, he's, 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 works both ways. I think, you know, yeah. all the fans appreciate of him because when he joined, everyone thought, Oh, we've got a bit of a cut here, yeah? you know, he's just gonna lump it up to him and he might score the odd goal, but he. Blended in that team superbly and worked his socks off, and also, you know, gave everything for the team. So it was really good. So you just knew he was West Ham. Yeah, he was fighting so, for a place, uh, and yeah. that's really important isn't it, as a supporter. Of course, I mean that's what we ask, isn't it? Really, it's like yeah, yeah. we ask. They just they, they put a shift in, and uh, and you know, it's not their fault if they're not technically good enough. You know, they we you know the the managers have picked them in the team, but as long as they try, then then that's all we ask, and um, and you're right. There's there's players who who who, but also it's how they interact as well. So it's like with someone like Crossy, you know, for example, him his Twitter game is very good. You know, he's he's very good. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, same as people like Bish and Sinks and people like that. You know, there's you know, and TC. I mean, they'll 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 all, do, all sort of you know interact well with the fans on Twitter. That's, that's how well, you can interact with fans at the moment. You can't walk down the street or yeah. go after an autograph. You've got to get a, a follow and a tweet and a retweet and a like, and that's what you get nowadays. And that's probably all we're going to get for a few more months at least. Um, but yeah, they're, no, yeah, top top guys, and obviously the effect that Pop Robson made on their their careers is is yeah, yeah, can't take not that totally. Oh. Joke. I'm not surprised because, I mean, he was just a, a natural goal scorer and yeah. you don't get many of those around, really. No. If you go, I mean, I, I wonder, putting McAvenny alongside him, I wonder if I'd have had to, if Dean Ashton hadn't got injured, yeah, he might well have been in for one of those two. What a decision yeah. that would have been, you know. Would have been a nice one to make, Jeff. Would have been a nice one to have made. I, that it was one, the, one of the saddest days with Ashton. Uh, he had everything. Yeah. It was a complete centre forward, yeah. and we never saw it. You know, it, it, that's typical bloody West Ham. <laughs> that's all I can say. You know, it's, it's so just easy. when you think things are on the up, and then that happens, you think, "Yeah, yeah." Of course, I had a good week last week, didn't I? Yeah, it's gonna, there's gonna be a yeah. downer now. You know, it's the roller coaster effect. It is. He, he could have been. He, he so could have been. He could be one of the best. One of the best we've ever had. Yeah. Um, Man, that he had everything as a player, he had everything. Um, you know, he had pace, he had power, he had skill, he had he was a physical presence, and oh. yeah, he just gets hobbled by the, the smallest yeah. player, yeah. Ever <laughs> as is the West Ham way. Yeah, it wouldn't be West Ham otherwise, would it? <laughs> it wouldn't have been, wouldn't be, it's too simple. Uh, oh dear, but anyway, Jeff, thank you. That's it, that's it, man. Uh, you know, an hour has flown yeah. by without us even trying, mate. So, um. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for coming oh, on. Thank man. you for inviting me. It's, I really enjoyed it. Now I don't have to wreck my brains now, so it's no, good. You I've never, no, you, what, what, happens, what happens? You'll go back, you'll be asleep, you'll jump up and go, oh, my yeah. God. I'm, I can't <laughs> anyway, um, so thank you so much, man. Um, and obviously, thanks everyone for watching or, or watch or listening or whatever. Give it a like, give it a share, whatever platform you, you listen to or watch it. And um, from myself and from Jeff, Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Come in your irons, and we'll see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Much love. Bye-bye.